Hello everyone. Good evening. Today we will discuss about newer anti-epileptics. Uh, this will be more of a theory topic only. Okay. First drug we will discuss about Vigabatrin. Mechanism, it's mechanism of action. It is an analog of GABA. So it irreversibly inhibits the GABA transaminase. It is a structural analog. Of GABA. And it irreversibly inhibits the. GABA transaminase. Okay. What are its indications? It is a first line management for the infantile spasm with tuberous sclerosis. So, child with an infantile spasm with tuberous sclerosis, it is a first line of management. First line of management in child with infantile spasm with tuberous sclerosis. Okay, its pharmacokinetics are it is good oral bioavailability and it is excreted unchanged in the urine. It has a good oral bioavailability and these are exchange I mean excreted unchanged in the urine we will see its side effects it can cause the development of bilateral concentric peripheral visual field constriction it leads to development of peripheral visual field constriction so before starting this tablet the drug you should uh, get an optal opinion and even after starting this after a one week of starting the drug you should uh, do a follow up for optal okay so what is the dosage it is started at the dose of 50 mg sorry 50 mg per kg per day we have to see the response to this drug okay so response to the drugs take about two weeks so response to this takes two weeks so if the response is present if the response is yes present and you have to continue the tablet for or drug for six months if the response is not present or it is absent you have to discontinue it the maximum dose you can give is 150 mg per kg per day okay this is about the viga battery this much is enough for the theory exam I'm basically I'm writing the everything for the theory point of view only. Okay. Next drug is Leviteraisitum. It is a broad spectrum anti-epileptic. Its mechanism of action. It inhibits the voltage activated calcium channel. It inhibits the voltage activated calcium channel. How I remember is since this contains C in its name, so it is calcium channel. Okay. Since there is no N in this uh, levitidacetum spelling so it doesn't inhibit the sodium channels i remember it by this way so it uh, another it has an another action also that is it binds to synaptic vesicle protein it also binds to 
SV2A that is synaptic vesicle protein. So it is an integral membrane glycoprotein that is involved in the control of vesicle fusion and the exocytosis. So that is involved in the control of vesicle fusion and exocytosis okay its indications are it is an adjuvant drug therapy in partial onset seizure and in the uh, generalized tonic clonic seizure GTCS. Okay, it can be used uh, safely in the patients with the liver disease, and it has a minimal drug interaction with other AEDC. This point you can write it in the pharmacokinetics. So it can be safely used in patients with the liver disease. There will be a minimal. drug interaction with other AEDs okay its side effects it uh, these have uh, normal side effects like dizziness headache and everything like that rare side effects are it can also cause behavioral side effects like aggression emotional liability and psychosis doses we give it at the dose start of the dose of 10 mg per kg per day in two divided doses and it can be hiked by 10 to 20 mg per kg every two weekly hiked by 10 mg to 20 mg per kg every two weeks maximum doses 40 to 60 mg per kg per day this is about the levitracetal next drug we will see about topiramate its mechanism of action starting with its mechanism of action it acts on the voltage dependent sodium channel it causes the enhancement of GABA and it also causes decrease in the glutamate This can also cause inhibition of carbonic anhydrase. Okay, this is the mechanism of action of topiramate. Its indications are this is used in refractory, partial, or generalized epilepsy. Refractory, partial, or generalized. epilepsy it can be used in other epilepsy syndromes the epilepsy syndromes in which this can be used are linux gustav infantile spasm and in myoclonic astatic epilepsy So these are the epileptic syndrome in which this topiramate can be used. Its side effects are, it can also cause dizziness, ataxia, 
एंड मेंटल स्लोइंग इट अदर साइड इफेक्ट्स दैट इज रेयर साइड इफेक्ट्स आर इट कैन आल्सो लीड टू मेटाबॉलिक एसिडोसिस डिक्रीज्ड स्वेटिंग थर्ड नेफ्रोलिथियासिस ओके द डोज इन व्हिच दिस इज बीइंग यूज्ड इज एट 1 टू 3 mg पर kg पर डे okay this is about the topiramate next we'll see about the lamotrigine starting off with its mechanism of action it blocks the voltage dependent sodium channel same as uh, this topiramate so it blocks voltage dependent sodium channel second it also blocks the release of glutamate these are the two mechanism of action of lamotrigine okay so it is indications are same as that of uh, this topiramate that is it is used in the refractory partial and generalized epilepsy it is also used in typical and atypical absence seizures okay the side effects are behavioral disturbance steven johnson syndrome so you remember for lamont trigin the main side effects steven johnson syndrome rare it can lead to toxic epidermal necrolysis and it can also or it may exacerbate myoclonic seizures in patients with dravet syndrome so the dose is same as like uh, topiramate i will write it here dose you give it at 1 to that is 1 to 3 mg per kg is same as at 1 to 2 mg per kg per day okay and it this also can be hiked by weekly with a maximum dose of 3 to 8 mg per kg per day hmm? this is about the lamotrigin next we'll see about joni samide its mechanism of action it causes blockage of t type calcium channel and it can also cause prolongation of the sodium channel inactivation it doesn't block sodium channel it causes inactivation of the sodium channel can be prolonged third it can it causes the inhibition of carbonic anhydrase okay its indication is it is used in progressive myoclonic epilepsy syndromes progressive myoclonic epilepsy syndromes it is used as second line in second line treatment in infantile spasm in linux gustard we'll see this syndromes another day 
i'll take this about all the epileptic syndromes together third in juvenile myoclonic epilepsy these are its indication its side effects are it i'll tell you the rare side effects or kidney so that is nephrolithiasis hyperthermia are this rare side effects this dose you start it at 2 to 4 mg per kg per day it is started at this is a starting dose its maintenance dose is 4 to 8 mg per kg per day okay this is about zonisamide next we'll see about rufinamide mechanism of action it prolongs the inactive state of sodium channels as that of zonisamide it prolongs the inactive state of sodium channel its indication is it is mainly used in the children more than 4 years of age more than 4 years of age in children with refractory uh, linox gastaut syndrome okay this is about rufinamide next i'll tell about stiripentol stiripentol mechanism of action it enhances the central gaba transmission and it is indication is it is used as a adjuvant to clobazam and valproate in the treatment of refractory uh, gtcs indication is it is used as used in refractory gtcs in adjuvant to clobazam and valproate this is about stiripentol next i'll see about retigabin retigabin mechanism of action is it opens the voltage gated potassium channel so uh, till now we have not seen about potassium channel this retig retigabin opens the voltage gated potassium channel thus it leads to hyperpolarization of the membrane leads to membrane hyperpolarization okay its indication are it's used in the treatment of benign familial neonatal convulsions so indication it is used in the treatment of benign familial neonatal convulsions okay so these are the newer anti epileptics uh, i'll cover about uh, brevaracetam and uh, still two more newer epileptics in upcoming videos thank you please like share and comment if you need any other topics or you have if i have to modify this topic in some other way in better way in which you can understand okay please like share and subscribe my youtube channel thank you let's all learn pediatric together